What is up guys, Dale Boy here. So on the undercard of Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Povetkin, we have a lightweight rematch between Luke Campbell and Yvan Mendy. This fight originally took place in December 2015 and Mendy won a split decision that night. I felt he comprehensively beat Luke Campbell that night. You know, a split decision doesn't really tell the full story. Mendy, for the most part, was in charge of that fight. He dropped Luke Campbell and, you know, he was the clear victor. It was quite a comprehensive victory. And since then, uh, fortunes have kind of differed for each man. The loser, Luke Campbell, has actually gone on to get a couple of good wins on the resume. He defeated Argenis Mendez. He got off the floor to beat him. You know, Mendez is a good operator, former world champion at Super Featherweight, I believe. Um, he also beat Darlis Perez again, former world level operator. So since the Mendy defeat, Campbell has picked up a couple of good wins. He also picked up another loss against Torge Linares in a world title fight. And uh, he put up a good show, but ultimately Linares had a bit too much class, a bit too much power and a bit too much experience for Luke Campbell at that stage. So Campbell, being the bigger name since that Mendy fight, has actually got a few decent fights. He's got a couple of good names on the record, and he's actually had more opportunities since that defeat. Yvan Mendy, on the other hand, he has stayed relatively active since that win against Luke Campbell back in December 2015. He's fought seven times since then, so he's not struggled to get fights, but he's not really fought the highest level of opposition. The best win since that Luke Campbell win was arguably against Francesco Patera, uh, Patera hails from Belgium and, you know, he, he went on to become a European champion. So that was Mendy's best win since that Campbell win. Uh, and also, actually, I say he's been active, but he's not actually fought in 2018 either. So although he's had quite a few fights since that Campbell win, you know, 2018, he's not been busy at all. In fact, he's had no fights. And it's kind of, uh, it goes to show what type of a sport boxing is, you know. It's not just based on how good you are. It's not just based on your resume, who you've beaten. But it's about your marketability and, you know, how how well you can be sold to the public. And the reality is, you know, Luke Campbell, he has got a bit of a um, look about him. He can, he can draw some crowds. People are aware of who he is. You know, he's an Olympic gold medalist. He's a lot more sellable. Whereas Yvan Mendy is kind of in the Who Needs Him club. Um... But I'm glad these two guys are rematching. And it's a really interesting fight. Because ultimately, it's a bit of a crossroads fight. Because let's be honest, if Luke Campbell loses against Yvan Mendy again, you know, that puts him in a hard spot. Luke Campbell, I think a lot of people think he's young. But Luke Campbell is actually 31 in uh, September. So, if he were to lose this fight, it would be his third defeat in 21 fights. And... It would really be a big blow to his career. I'm not saying his career would be over should he lose, but you know it really certainly puts a big question mark over his future in the sport and how far he can actually go. A loss for Luke Campbell would be quite devastating. And same goes for Mendy. Mendy can't afford to lose because if he does lose, he's going to be cast aside and nobody's going to use him as an opponent because he's dangerous, he's awkward, he's tough, he's durable, he's got no fan base. Who's going to want to fight Mendy? If he loses, they're just going to cast him aside and he'll be forgotten about. So Mendy has to win. It's especially important Mendy wins because Eddie Hearn will try to rebuild Luke Campbell. They might chuck Luke Campbell in there with a Anthony Croner or a Ricky Burns or a Lewis Ritson. At least he's got another fight after this should he lose. You know, Mendy might not have that luxury. So Mendy has to win this one. That's why I see it as a bit of a crossroads fight. The loss obviously impacts Mendy more, but a loss for Campbell, man, it's not looking good for him. So, this is a high stakes fight. And not only that, I felt the first fight, although Mendy pretty much clearly won it, I felt it was entertaining and it was competitive in stages. Uh, you know, Mendy was kind of a pressure fighter that night. He really crowded Luke Campbell well. He didn't give Campbell time and space to box and pick his shots. I felt Mendy really put on a good display that night, you know, really good up-close boxing. And I think the stylistic clash will mesh quite well again. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be interesting to see what Luke Campbell has learned since that defeat and since the Linares defeat. I felt 
against Linares, it did see it, it looked like he made some improvements. You know, he was punching harder. I think he was a little bit more aggressive at times. He was holding centre ring a little bit more. He put more spite on his jab. I felt he boxed a lot better against Linares, even in a losing effort. But, um, yeah, this is a really good fight. I'm looking forward to it. Not only that, Luke Campbell obviously has a new trainer. He is now with Shane McGuigan. So, it's going to be interesting to see how that affects his performance, whether it be positive or negative. You know, I like Shane McGuigan. I think he's a good young coach. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what he does with Luke Campbell. I think this is a good fight. I think it's an intriguing fight. And it's a good fight for that card. What do you guys think of this one? Peace.